So my goal today from this talk, for at least half of you to have learned or thought about a new concept about how you or your teams work, um, to bring you closer to using an experimental mindset. So often in life we use opinions and this is where we end up with conflicts or assumptions. Um, so how can we use experimental mindset in work and within teams? Um, and to dispel myths that agile remote working is different to any other agile working. Remote is just another word that's in there. Okay, a little bit of a traditional route into talks. So my journey into remote working, I do like to cover this. Variety is the spice of life that's in there. So my um, career started out in forensic science. I've got a degree in forensic science, was a DNA expert for six years. Um, and along that time, I was in a situation where we were trying to change our systems. Uh, we'd change one thing over here, it would break over here. We need to upload to the government database, we get our credentials and our reputation from that. We fail that, we don't win work from the police. We don't get jobs, we don't get pay rises, we don't get to move on in our careers and actually do good for the people. Um, that wasn't going to be considered as a role, even though I'd proven it over and over again. So I actually took a chance on going to a company to be a tester. Never done testing before. I actually Googled, paid to test things. Um, and I got a job. It was great. Uh, it was really exciting. Um, learned so many things. But true to form of when I went into testing, uh, testing was done at the end of everything. Um, and because of my character, uh, it, was, it was a lot of older people in the company, it was seen fit that when we took on our agile journey, um, that I was going to be a scrum master because I could coordinate people and hopefully make people smile and get them to do things. Um, so I became a scrum master and over that time I actually really found the value of understanding how to improve situations. Not just my opinion, but gathering other people's opinions and views. The people that do the work, how do we improve that moving forward? Um, and listening to the people and educating management on that that was the better way to do it. Um, so moved into an agile coach role, progressed through my career, which is where I met Chris and Raj from Nimble. Um, I inter they interviewed me and I took their jobs and it was great. <laughs> and they stepped away as a consultancy and uh, agile coaching was taken in-house at uh, booking.com which was amazing, it gave us loads of opportunities. Um, I went on to mat leave, which was a great thing. I gave birth to a potato. Um, <laughs> during that time, and there is a reason why I'm talking about this journey, during that time, COVID hit. Everything changed in the technology world. The world that I'd known for five or six years, it changed. I went back after mat leave. I was a year and a half behind everybody else. I was not great with that change. So much so, I'll go into the story later on, um, that I actually left the company. Um, and then I started working for the amazing Nimble, um, which we've progressed and absolutely love working here. Speak to our talent team. Um, so I will loop back around to why I've called this out. Um, so a couple of things um, that I want to call out is unconscious biases around people's experiences of remote working in an agile environment. Time. How long have people in your team either been around remote working, have had remote working? Yes, it was the way of the world in, um, in COVID times, but some people weren't in technology. Some people hadn't got used to how that worked or what they needed to do. Processes of change, taking it on a personal level. How does that person deal with change? They're not you, you're not them. This needs to be considered. It can't just be assumed that if somebody is being um, not conducive or not joining into an environment, that it's just that they don't want to. They might be struggling with that change. They might not know how to express that. Communication. How many people nowadays that if I FaceTimed you, you wouldn't answer it, you would text me at the same time? Some people feel like that. And that's how it is with remote working. Forcing people into a situation where they're not comfortable with isn't really conducive to um, teams excelling and feeling trusted and feeling safe. So these are all things that need to be considered and talked about. Characteristics, are they introvert, extrovert? Are they that person that sits and listens to everything that are very quiet but asks the most amazing question? Or are they really super loud? And over conversations, <laughs> just seeing these two tapping each other. Um, in conversations, when you're in remote working, that loud person is heard more because we're in that constrained environment where we don't see body language. So how do you, as leaders or as people in team, or being that person yourself, how do you identify that? I do have to call out, put introvert, extrovert. 
they're not labels for people, right? We are all introvert and extrovert in different environments as well. So that also needs to be considered. In a team environment, somebody may be massively extroverted. You put them in a situation with senior management, they might change. So be aware of this as well, especially on calls. I knew that was going to happen. Culture and trust. Do you have it in place? Is it there? Do people feel safe? How do you know they feel safe? If you walk out of a meeting knowing full well that you've not given your honest com communication to whoever's in that meeting, who's to say not everybody's done that? How do we, as leaders and people within technology and within teams and with ourselves, how do we look and understand this? And the final one, neurodiversity and disabilities, remote working. If you're neurodiverse, um, like myself, I'm currently going through a process of ADHD diagnosis and bipolar. Some of these things I find massively overwhelming and I need to step away. If somebody told me I had to have my camera on 24 seven, I can't, I just can't do it. So how do we, as again, as team and as leaders and as people, remove unconscious bias around assuming that everybody is okay with that? If you have somebody who's partially sighted and you're doing a workshop on Miro, how do you make sure they feel included? We need to consider all of these moving forward in the world that we're in. A term I don't like, and this feeds into my story um, around mat leave, fail fast, quote from too many people in the agile world. Um, that statement by itself means absolutely, <laughs> I know I feel so bad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you did, you had some points afterwards that actually came with what matters. This on its own, where we hear that, fail fast, just fail fast doesn't mean anything. Like The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expe expecting a different outcome. So if we're just failing fast, well, we're just getting it wrong quicker. And this is where I like to turn into the story of like why I moved away from the role that I was in when I turned back um, from maternity leave. There was a number of things that weren't considered. So when I moved back into the team, a lot of those unconscious biases were not addressed. Things weren't done. Things weren't questioned. Things weren't there was no conversations about anything. We were in a situation where there was a lack of communication. I joined back. There was no support. There was no one to go to. There was no one to explain to me how this world worked. There was no one that gave me tips and tricks. There was no one that said, okay, well, this is our way of working now. This is what we do. These are conversations that we had. Um, and in my gut, it felt really wrong to sit there and do nothing about it. And I kicked myself for just conforming, but I'd come back as a new mum, I just wanted to fit back in again. Um, so, this is what I go by now. Failure is but a step towards learning and therefore the opportunity to grow and succeed. There's my name again, and an overthinker and oversharer, as you'll probably find out during the night after these talks. Um, so, things that I would do differently in that situation is would have trusted my gut. I would have stripped it back and started back at the start when you've got a new team, regardless. If you had a new team in the office, brand new team, ways of working, getting to know each other, that doesn't change just because we're remote. There are tools and tips and ways to do this online. So I would have ensured that that happened, and I do continue to do that now. If I'm in a situation where I feel that a team isn't working to their best and to their optimum, we do strip it back. We have those conversations. We start again. There is no harm in taking two steps back to start running forward. Um, other things that I would look at as well is communication, is trust. Things that happen in environments where we don't have these fundamentals built is that we end up in a situation where there is one person taking the stand up that is telling everybody what to do. Nobody pushes back. Therefore, we don't have the opportunity to collaborate. People leave. We get high turnover. And then we never come into a stable environment where we can get high performing teams. And this is what happens if we don't pay attention to it over remote working. It does take more effort because we don't have things like body language. We don't have the water cooler chats. So how do we create those environments for people and teams to thrive? So a couple of tips. I like to break them down into people, tools and practices, opportunities to learn. I don't know why I read them because you can all read. Um, <laughs> Going to chuck some measures in here as well. So there's, there's a list here, team ways of working, flexible working, talk about it. You know, the world is a different place. What if somebody has to work seven till nine and then goes and drops the kids off and then comes back on work at 10 and then is working all through the day? Or they work a little bit later. As a team, talk about it. Have that conversation. Focus on the girl, not on the time online. So many times I have seen my friends sitting there wiggling a mouse. Not in Nimble, my other friends. Um, to show that that green blinkery thing, but well, we don't do it in Nimble, so it's not, it's not a thing. 
to make sure that they're online and they look busy. So focus on the goal. Is the work getting done? Is the client happy? Is the customer happy? Are you on target to what you anticipated? If you were in the office, well, you wouldn't be able to book a meeting room for two weeks because you need 12 of you in that one room that nobody else can get in. So in terms of delivering and progression and making sure that we're on track, being at home and taking that time out to go and walk the dog for five minutes, go and get tea on for the night so you can go play your kids when you get home. Like, that all fits in, but, but talk about it and talk about the goal, not about the time online. Talk about more than just the work and the water cooler chat. I was actually only going to talk about the ones that were highlighted, but I'm just too excited. <laughs> boundaries. Set boundaries. If you have apps on your phone, what is expected of that? If I, message it, if I message somebody who was in my team, they know full well that I do not expect a response. Um, so there's boundaries. So say if you're in a situation where there is inferred hierarchy, if I sent a message to one of the team, my team know full well that I do not expect a response. They just know that maybe my brain is just doing some crazy overtime at night. But if you have somebody who is a manager where hierarchy is inferred and there isn't trust, if they send a message at half past 10 at night, you go, oh, Jesus Christ, if I don't reply to that, I'm not going to get my promotion. I'm not going to look favourably on. But talk about it. Set those boundaries. Um, when you go on holiday, delete the apps. Tell everyone you're deleting the apps. You're not contactable. Make sure you talk about these things. And all of these roll up into these team ways of working. Um, celebrate success. Um, opportunities to learn. So we've got daily stand-ups filling in the description on the email invite. If you want people to come, tell them why. If you're having to prioritise, because we are now back to back with things, because we don't have to wait for meeting rooms, looking into somebody's calendar, I think I've got that somewhere, and taking that last half an hour of their day, don't be that person. <laughs> Take it to the next day. So fill in, in that description. If you want them there, fill it in. Uh, retrospectives, demos, I'll come back to those highlighted ones, I'll do what I was supposed to do. Uh, demos, teach other people. Uh, teaching and mentoring sessions on agile and agility. Um, show and tells, lunch and learns, whatever you want to call them, share your passion, share it with people, get them involved, something bigger than their project, something wider. Um, shadow other teams, where you have capacity in how your company or consultancy works. Go and sit in on another team, how are they doing things? Can you take anything from them? Invite them to yours. Um, online events and conferences, Ta -da. Um, and offline time for personal development. So daily stand-ups is a 24-hour feedback loop. You stay connected to people, you know what's going on, they know what's going on, and you can all align on the same page. You can remove that assumptions. Have you all heard the assumptions make an ass out of you and me? It took me ages to realise that that's how it was spelled. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, don't be that person. Retrospectives, you've completed a period of work. Whether you're doing Scrum, Kanban, Lean, whatever you decide you're doing, reflect on it. Okay, how are you gonna learn if you don't reflect? And teaching and mentoring sessions on agility and agile. So again, this is removing assumptions that everybody's been taught it the same way. Um, agility and agile has been in the industry now at the forefront for quite a few years. People have been taught well, people have been taught poorly. Um, doesn't matter, but make sure you align in your team about what that is to you. Doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It's got to be right or wrong to you as a group collectively. And the final one, tools and practices. So when I heard the title of this talk, my first mind went to, everybody just wants to know how to use Jira or Miro. And I was like, this is something that complements the other things. This is why we've got that trifecta there. So we've got visual aids for workflow. That's one aspect. Tools for collaboration is a different aspect. So we've got Jira, and then we've got something that people can input into freely, an online whiteboard. Sites for team building. Have fun. Your retrospectives don't always need to be about what was good, what was bad, what would you do differently. Have some fun. That's a retrospective. You learn about people. Move forward. What can we do next? Pair and mob programming. A document sharing platform. You are online now. Downloading things and emailing them to people means you're going to have 9 million copies of the same thing with different versions. Find a document sharing platform. It will make your life easier. Um, reminders for the team. Putting them in Slack putting them in their emails for them. Do this thing, fill in your timesheets. I know it's something that, I don't want to use the word common sense because it's a daft word, um, but it's something that just because you choose to do it doesn't mean that everybody else does. So how can you help your team, yourself, move forward from that? Calendar sharing, don't take the only empty slob, we mentioned that one. 
Share your calendars. You know, if you don't want to, what are you doing? What are you hiding? Um, CICD pipelines with automated testing and getting a DOD and a, a definition of done. Sorry, acronym, acronyms. And a, people might not know what those mean. Definition of done and a definition of ready for when you're doing your work. When is it finished? When are you ready to start it? Getting those explicit and visual will be a godsend to you all. So visual aids for workflow, things like Trello, things like Jira. Um, again, question yourselves when you're using them, how you're using them, what value are they bringing? Is it only that the test lead can move that ticket from that column to that column? If that's the reason, why address the root cause? Have a little look at why you're using that and why, if things are locked down, you move into a situation where it is locked down, challenge it, ask why. If no one can tell you why, challenge it again. Keep going, find those answers. Um, pair and mob programming removes, <laughs> removes single points of failure. <laughs> I'll just go through. Removes, I'll just talk. Removes single points of failure. If somebody's on holiday, gets hit by a bus, blah, 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 blah. They can share the knowledge. We don't always want it to be um, one person that knows everything and making the decisions. Opportunity to learn, upskill people. CICD pipelines, automated testing. We've just all talked about it. It's no point me reiterating what somebody else knows better. So I said about measures of success. I'm not going to go through these. There is an opportunity to contact me afterwards. So if you're going to do something, measure something. So this is moving into the experimental mindset. If I change something in a team and I go, it's better, and the rest of the team goes, it's wrong, but there's inferred hierarchy, who's going to be heard? Do something, measure it, leave some time, measure it again. Um, so there's just a selection here of what you can do, what you can take away, and what you can trial and experiment. If you need to know any more, Again, there's a, there's a way to contact me afterwards. The great big trade-off. The idea is to be in this lovely little sweet spot in the middle, but it's not always possible. But be conscious that if you are choosing to trade off something, why you are trading it off. So, for example, if you're looking at people, um, people and tools and practices, if you're up at number one, driving forwards, utilising people with tech in hand, could speed up delivery, get it to market quicker, happy client, great but you've not learned anything. Could have been the better way to do it. So you can see these here, there's trade-offs for all of them. People over opportunities and learning. Um, drawback, there's no action or change. So we're talking about it, but we're not doing anything. Anybody been into a retrospective where we've talked about amazing things and not done nothing about it? Where would you put yourself on here? Okay. So, but if you are choosing to not be in that sweet spot and not focus on all of these elements, be conscious about it. That's fine, we can't always be in the middle, but choose why and when can we get back to that. Has anyone seen this before? Principles of agile software delivery? No different when you're working remotely. The only difference is that you're behind a computer screen. But in its essence, agile is about being able to adapt, about being able to change, about being able to reflect. These are only guidelines. If someone comes along to you and says, well, you're not doing face-to-face -face communication, you're not agile, just laugh. It's evolved, it's different. That's the nature of agility. Find something, is it working, is it not working? What's the next thing? This will be on your wonderful gift as you leave, if you choose to have it. I like physical artifacts still sometimes. Here's an experiment table. Pick something, what's your solution? How long are you gonna run it for? How do you know when it's gonna be a success? What's your start value, what's your end value? Did you meet your criteria and all the most important one, as I find, is what's next? And then what? Are we just going to do it and then ignore it? Didn't work, whatever. Use that time. Help that team evolve. Help yourself evolve. I use this in my personal life. My husband hates it. But <laughs> either or, it works for me. So in summary, be aware of unconscious bias towards people. Put the time and effort in with people and the learning opportunities. Tools are there to support. They're not the only thing to focus on. So if you thought you were going to come away with lists of tips and tricks about how to use Jira and lock things down. Very sorry. Um, be aware of where your focus is. So when we're looking at that trifecta, where are you choosing to be? Where are you? Where do you want to be? Agile remote working is just agile working in its essence. And experiment mindsets will help you thrive. Um, and the grass is always green away you water it. So if it's hard, water more. Don't bail. And will you guys be accountable? So this will come out on your handouts as well. So if you scan the QR code, you can do it, you do it later on. Um, 
it's a checkpoint on your experimentation. So if you want me to get in contact with you in the next two or three weeks, check if you've run anything. Are you going to run anything? Um, there's that opportunity there to contact me via email. Uh, there's also an opportunity to give me feedback. Because um, this is what this is about. We learn. We give feedback. We've, we evolve. We move on. And uh, it's been my pleasure.